What's going on? I'm LTJ Reeves, and this is Throwing Light. It is 2 p.m. on Sunday, August 25th, and to this afternoon's guest is going to be Mr. International Leather uh, 46, Jamal Hara O'Malley. Before we get started, remember that uh, Ashwell is an important organization here in the local area that helps provide services for us, not just physically, mentally, they also have a food bank. So if you really want to help the community, go to ashwellatx.org, either see if the services might be something that will be of use to you, or you could donate. Now, let's get started with it. Kicking it over to the International Mr. Leather, my IML Class 46. <laughs> sibling here i've got you here it's been three months since iml jamal so why don't you go ahead and tell everybody who you are and how you came into the leather scene well I'm jamal herrera o'malley i'm the current iml international mr leather um and how i got into that the leather scene is rugby Back in 2012, 2013, when I went to St. Louis for a rugby match, and one of the guys that was there had his own leather shop. So I got fitted for a harness and suspenders for the first time, and it was amazing. Like, the way when I first got it on and first had it, and then looking at myself in the mirror, I was like, oh, yeah, this is yeah, this is the ticket for me. And then ever since then, I was hooked. Yeah. And then, yeah, ever since then, I was hooked. But, but it was the rugby community that introduced me to the leather community. Okay. Um, so that is really interesting. That is an interesting story. So, um, you know, what brought you into wanting to be a leadership leader in the community? Well, it was more the lack of um, diversity and inclusion in the community that I was in that I decided, well, if it's not going to be me, who else is going to be? Because no one else is stepping up to make a difference. And so that's why I really made the difference of getting my first title was to create a more diverse and, and um, safe environment. Um, at the Eagle in San Francisco for all critters, no matter what you identify as. And as a result, oh my God, we have a plentiful, plentiful, diverse group. So diverse that I changed my pup title to a pet title to really reflect the community that we have now, because it's a lot more diverse than it was when I started. For those that are, you know, new to, you know, the idea of pet, like explain to everyone what the difference between being a pup title and a pet title. How are we allowing more people to be able to step up in the community? Well, having a pup title is exclusive. You could be a rubber pup, you could be a, a leather pup, but you have to identify most likely as a pup to win a pup title. Um, to be a pet title, you can be a fox. You could be a coyote, like my title son's a coyote. Um, you could be a bird. You, it opens it up to more, more different species of animals to be able to represent and be seen and be heard and, and really impact the community. What led you to the pup and pet scene? Me, personally, at work. I'm in charge. You know, at home, I take more of a in charge role at managing stuff. So it was my opportunity not to be in charge, which turned into me being in charge, but it was my opportunity to just relinquish all that stress, just step back and have fun and not even worry about, you know, being in charge. Just it's a let go for me. So, um, you know, uh, when you won International Mr. Leather, it, it was definitely a very joyous time, not just for the whole community, but like the, the pet and the, the pup scene, like, because we got that representation. Um, you're in the San Francisco area, um, and, you know, we went through IML together. I just want to say right off the bat, like, you are one of the most supportive human beings. I mean, to you were supportive towards me in IML. Uh, you've been supportive towards me since that. 
you've even become international Mr. Leather. I see how you constantly check on us. You're always in the WhatsApp. You are engaged. You care about our class. And it really shows and it's really amazing. And I just was, I just want to reiterate how, uh, how, how much joy came to me when you were announced the winner. It was, it was Thank very you. nice to have, I had this sense of relief. <clears throat> I know that your heart's in the right place and I know you see me and recognize me for who I am. And I think you, you treat everybody with respect. So, uh, you know, you're, you're not just international Mr. Leather, but you know, you're, you're our Mr. Congeniality, you know? Yeah. Well, real. I think having a pup of the heart of a pup and, and having that background and and me being one, it really that nurturing, caring, you know, type of headspace that I keep and that's part of me, I exude that to other people and treat people the way I want to be treated. And and I always want to help people, you know, service is my thing. So service has always been serving the community, making sure that for those marginalized communities are being seen and heard. And, and like my trans and non-binary communities, making sure they're getting the support that they need. And I'm like, so for me, I think being a pup was a asset for me winning IML because it, I just came to be me. I didn't come to be a fictitious person or, you know, paint the picture. I was just being the person that I am. And, and I think my pup side reflected a lot during um, IML. So, you know, um, going through that experience, it's been three months since, you know, like we've had this journey Obviously, your schedule started picking up. You started making decisions about what where you needed to be. We talked. You said you want to make sure you're also taking advantage of opportunities that you might not get again. You know what I'm saying? So, like, mm -hmm. I've seen your schedule grow. So, <laughs> let's Crazy. talk about that a little bit about what you're doing travel wise. Like, you know, where have what are what? How do you rationalize your you know, you're traveling. I know that you want to do pet representation and there's some places that you want to go where you're just like, man, I really want to experience this. How are you going about where you go and where you choose to go? What's kind of some of the mm -hmm. choices? Well, it, it's a team effort because I have, you know, Pussycat, MIR, um, I think 20, 26. And then also Tobias, who's my mentor, and then also James, who was IML 2018, you know, they have a good understanding of the producers and what's going on in different areas. Because a lot of stuff I didn't take in consideration that I had to take consideration once I became IML when it comes to travel, like political climate, what's going on, who's inviting me, what kind, it, what am I getting into? There's a whole lot of that that you have to think about before you decide to go to a place. But even then, I wanted to make sure that I went to, a, I went to leather events and pup events. Like, um, and a lot of them are combined. A lot of the times, like when I go to um, Grand Canaria, I'm gonna be judging um, Mr. Gr um, the pup, Grand Canaria, and then also um, Mr. Fetter Spain. I'm going to Zurich for just for, cause they just got their pup and handler back. Um, so this is going to be their first in years that they're doing a proper handler contest. And I'm going there to support them there. And then also Melbourne invited me and I'm going to go there to, um, they are doing their pup and handler, um, bringing that back. And so I'm going to definitely go there. Plus IPTC, I definitely want to support there. Um, but then I'm also going to, you know, um, Berlin and for for Folsom and then um, our Folsom here in San Francisco um, and then we have um, we have our was it Palm Springs our step down um, MML that I'm going to I'll be judging there and then Darklands of course um, having a presence there within the pup and and pet community there plus the leather community and then um, so I'm trying to balance the two and have representation in both or if there's a combination that's fantastic 
That's amazing. Uh, so let me think. So, you know, Ralph was my judge for my Austin Eagles. So Ralph, James, Jack, um, you, Marcus, Gael, like the commonalities that I've noticed between all of y'all is humbleness. And um, that's pretty awesome. You are a very humble person. You have not changed. And I don't mean this like you are growing and changing as good, but what I'm talking about, how you conduct yourself, how you treat people hasn't been any, hasn't been just, you've been you, yeah. you've been yeah. good and you're genuine and it just really shows. So it always feels good to know when you go through an experience with someone and you just know that they're all around a great person. Um, let's go back to IML a little bit. Um, I know, and this is something that I've talked to because I've had several of our siblings on here before and prior to it. We talked a lot about our experience. You were really very helpful to me in the waiting time <laughs> that we had so much what, waiting time. Yeah. You were very good at, you know, being supportive, being a comfort. I'm sure there were times where I just came and hugged you, but like, um, you know, it was mutual. Like, I don't know what was going through your head during that time because, you know, you don't know how it's going to pan out. And it was just like, no, I was never thinking. I didn't know who was going to win. And it's just interesting. I spent time with you through that process to you getting the sash that it was just, it was just, it you were, you were just as authentic behind the scenes as you were in front of the scenes. So, and you are thoughtful. Like I was in Dory, Dory the other weekend, you know, the things I struggle with and you knew to check on those things. And that was really helpful just to have that concern and care to know that, hey, that might be something I'm struggling with or dealing with. But so you're very thoughtful and aware. Um, you know, how do you make time for all of this? That's my question. How do you make time to just be there for everybody? Um. I don't know if I think of it as making time or just in the moment. Like, I just think about that stuff. Like, when we were in IML and we were all going through that together, I was getting support as well as giving support as, you know, but for me, my thought process was, oh, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. My thought process was, just, I'm going to give a me and I'm going to be me. If I'm the... <laughs> Excuse the pun, but if I'm the flavor of the week, then I'm going to get chosen. If I'm not, and they're looking for something else, at least I can walk away and say I did my best. My biggest thing, I didn't want to disappoint my community because it was my community got me there and helped me because I went through a lot to get to IML. And I guess if I didn't go through the challenges and the things that happened, I probably wouldn't have been IML. So I really appreciate my community and San Francisco for how they rose up for me and supported me throughout and even now and didn't even stop then and still continue to do that. And I also still continue to try and bring in my brothers who are around to see something going on, see if I can bring them in. And, and still because they all have fantastic um, platforms and, and things they want. And I want to support them in their goals and the things they want to do and accomplish as IML. It's just not all about me. It's it's all about the community. And if we're doing stuff and bringing leadership into the community that's going to enhance it and make it better, then why not do that? I know people see it as being humble. I'm just, and it, it is, but I just feel that the whole goal is to improve our community, be a strong community and you know, we're going through a lot right now with, you know, voting and, and who could be in, you know. So we want to make sure we're standing together and not standing separate. And it takes that call to say, how are you doing? It takes it takes the littlest thing that you can change somebody's whole day. That hug that you gave me put a bit more for me, did more for me. <laughs> Because, you know, I needed that hug that day. I needed support as well as everybody else. And I think um, we did a great job of being there for one another throughout the, throughout the IML process. And I just, I, that's why I love my brother so much. So, and, you know, like I said, there was, it's like the actual contest part 
and when we actually compete is so much less than just the waiting and the preparation and just trying to get through those nerves and, and work them out. And like you said, when we, you know, and we drew contest numbers and just going through the process of everything. I went, I, we got to the end and, you know, you were, you know, you had won, you were, I saw you, you would walk around with James and Tobias, you were making all the adjustments and we talked about talking later or whatever like that. But it was that final day leaving where it was like, oh shit, like, I hope I spend enough time with these people because we'll never have that where we're all together like that again. And I was like, I need to take advantage of these opportunities. Now, I obviously, you know, I stay busy and stuff like that. And I'm going to take some downtime after my step down for like a month or whatever and do some things. But um, these relationships that we formed um you know like I, I was having a rough time a couple of weeks but like I 100% believe that y'all are there for me and that you're my family and I think that y'all have made me see myself more um as a whole because you guys see me as an asset to the community and so it's just really nice. And I, I want to keep these relationships going as, as much as possible. I will admit to you, I think, you know, how they say about like, I am come down. So I've had a glow up in terms of like my presence, but in terms of how I felt, I think I was running away from having to let go. Um, so when I got back, I was just busy myself and never really wanted to process that, you know, did I hug Jamal enough? Did I hug AJ? Did I hug, you know, like, did, am I going to, did, you know, are we going to be friends beyond that? I was just thinking a lot and I was scared that it was just over. You know what I'm saying? That I walk over, but no, like I've seen how things keep going, the chat, everything like that. But, um, I wasn't concerned about the competition after it was over. And I went to the competition just wanting to be able to stand on the stage and be like, hey, I'm here with my Bob. If you respect my Bob, please work with me after this competition. That was my goal. Um, because for me, you know, I'm still young in the community. I'm still figuring out my leather aesthetic and what makes me comfortable and things like that. But I showed up and 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 you helped a lot in just the reaffirmation that we're all in this together. Um, and so you've been going around and traveling around. So how do you feel, you know, post IML about your relationships with everyone in the class that you have connected with? I just got back from XJ step down um, in um, Iowa, in Des Moines, which Never would have saw myself going to Des Moines, Iowa, but we have a strong relationship and brotherhood, and I wanted to be there for him for his step down. And I honestly, I already booked it before I even won IML. So it was just an ice on the cake that I won IML, but we already built the brotherhood and the relationship prior to going. So why are the winning IML? So that's the type of brotherhood that you bonds and that you make even going into IML because there's no there's only a small number of people who actually know what you went through and you went through together. That's something that no one can ever take away from y'all, us in our, in our line. And we can identify with other um, IMLs and what they went through, but there's no other group that went through what we went through. <laughs> How we went through it, the different personalities that we navigated through to be together. And, and I think, I know people, a lot of people think, you know, after you win IML, it's like this and glamour, but it's it's humbling because it's so freaking overwhelming. Like from the time that you win, it's like your out-of-body experience. It's like you can't think. It's like you you have to have people there to help guide you to this because you are not prepared. You are not prepared. It took me uh, almost two months to get my mind after, because I'm a type of person that has, I like organization. And until I got everything kind of organized on how I was going to take in the invites and how I was going to deviate my time, 
I was, oh, that my brain was just crazy. And so once I got, I'm glad I had Pussycat and 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 I have um, Tobias and James to help me. And then my husband also to help me navigate that and put this together. And if it wasn't for them, I swear, if it wasn't for the people that helped me out while I was there, I probably would have stayed in my room, been like shaking back and forth because it was just so much, so much going on. And it takes people who've been through it to understand what you need to do and how to help you. So anybody in, in the future who, you know, I'm going to be there for them, but you do have to have a set of people who kind of know what you're about to go through if you win so they can navigate. I'm talking about just navigate the market, navigate sitting in that room and, and trying to get what they're telling you about the contract in your year, but you're so like, I had to record it because there was no way I was going to remember what, what was just said to me because I'm still, I just want I'm out. <laughs> I'm still processing. And it's hard to get new information when you still process the, the fact that you won. So I loved my brothers because they were like, how can we help? How can we help? We're there for you. How can we help? What can I do for you? Anything that you need. I mean, from the U.S. all the way to Europe, amazing experiences I've had with my title brothers being there. Like Tom, and, and Tom has been huge. When I, every time I go to Europe, every, he, we bonded so much because of the fact that he's always been there, asked the question, do you need anything? Like contacting me beforehand to make sure everything is set up. You know, things of that nature. And you just, um, this is not a job you can do by yourself. It's not. IML, you represent the community and you need to engage with the community and have the community come with you on your journey for that year because that's just going to make it more impactful than, than you trying to do everything yourself if that makes sense yeah um you know what i find so we talked right after you won and i remember what i when you were telling me what you were getting and why you were planning <laughs> i was like holy crap I'm 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 glad it's you and not me. <laughs> I was like, okay, you got you still got a lot of work going on that you're doing. Yeah. People need to recognize that that this is a lot to take yeah. big responsibility. It is to execute it in a way that you feel uh, fulfilled. You know, because you got it, and you really have to be like, look, am I going to go balls to the wall? You know, or am I just going to? just have this and you're definitely going balls to the wall. But that, I mean, you know, Marcus did it last year. Marcus was everywhere. Marcus was mm -hmm. everywhere. And it's, it's, and also, I guess I'm going to bring this back to the pup thing, but switching between headspaces was when I'm at work, I have to have one headspace. When I'm IML, it's a different headspace. So when I'm at home, it's a different headspace. So it's like, you have to be able to switch between versions of you to accommodate the situation that you're in. Because the work mode me, I do treat IML and being IML almost, it is a second job. And sorry about that. And and the corporate and and the corporate aspect of it is huge. It's like it's a business. You have to think about the things that you do because you're not just representing me, Jamal, Alpha. You're representing a whole community. You're representing an organization. And you don't want to go without willy-nilly just saying stuff and then it's going to come out, well, this is what IML thinks. Not Jamal. <laughs> and you're a reflection of the community. And you have to, honestly, you have to think about that before you... Get into your emotions about stuff before you post stuff on social media. You you have to, whatever causes that you decide that you want to pick up and and you want to run with for your title year. You have to think what the impact of that to the community. 
what's what's the impact to the organization that you're representing? So it's it is a lot. It's a lot you have to think about and navigate through. And again, you need people in your trusted people in your court to be able to help you navigate that. Because sometimes you don't ask yourself the questions that they bring up because of their experience. Or like if I go, if I get an invite from Europe, what do I know? And I may not know what the political situation is with that organization or what's going on there. Um, I have people in my court, no, no, did you know about X, Y, Z? Before you make that decision, let me let you know what you're getting into. And I'm like, oh, okay. So it does help. It, it's a lot. It's, it's really a lot taking, being ironed out. It's not just waving your hands. No, like you are... I mean, you can make it that way. I mean, there are all different types of IMLs you can be. You can be the political one. You can be the pageanty one that just shows up for the parades. You can be the activist. You can be this. I mean, you won, you won. And there's nothing wrong with how you decide you want to run your title year because that is your title year. You earned it. I just want my title year to be more meaningful. I want to say that I've done something within this year that has impacted someone in some way. I think I, just me stepping on that stage, like in my speech, was an impact. You know, I hope that someone who was watching that will see that they can do it too. Because there was only three people, including myself. <laughs> three other people that looked like me on that stage, right? So it's it's good to show that a reflection, like people see themselves in their IML. They see themselves and what the possibilities can be. And I'm hoping, and that's the goal for me this year, and also be a major support for our trans and non-binary community. That's amazing. And I just want to like shout out to Tobias and Puscat because I'm leaning into them too, and they're just really good about coming in and giving behind the scenes support. Uh, they are more places than you would realize. I just want to put that out there that they are very aware of what's going on in the community, who's what, when, where, and they will yes. step in if they need to step in. <laughs> so I'm just going to put that out there that we are definitely being supported and trying to, we have people, mentors that are really wanting to keep us on track. And yeah, shout out to them that they were they kept me on track the past couple of weeks, and I really really appreciate that. Um, we're towards the end now, uh, Jamal, and this is the part where I say, "Hey, is there anything that we are not shedding enough light in, on in our community that you think is important for us to be aware of?" Right now, we are under attack. We need to vote. We need to get out. We need to vote. I think that's the, I think that's one of the things we need to do. This is, look, we at the, like they said, in the, in the DCU Democratic Adventure, you know, we are, we are right there with that ball. We don't need to fumble. Exactly. We, need to, we need that touchdown. We need to get out. We need to vote. We need to make sure our voices are heard because we are a community that's under attack and we really need to come together and vote. And, and do what we need to do to get the right people in the right places. So, um, you know, I'm going to try to do a throwing light voting special. I'm actually going to invite our, I just had an interview last week with our IML brother, uh, Vince J. Uh, voting is his big thing. So I'm going to have him back on the panel. I'm going to put together. Um, I do want everyone to know that Jamal will be in the next um, IML class interview that I do, uh, session two. So Jamal will be in there. I'm excited. Tom will be back on that one too. Everyone else you have not seen yet. And uh, that cast reveal will come out sometime this week. Um, I am sure Jamal might be back on here at some capacity. We still have mm -hmm. nine months for IML year. I do want to say to our entire IML class, if y'all are watching, it is still our year. This is a glow up we need to uh, take hold of. We still got nine months that the conversation is about us. And as long as Jamal is ahead of us, we got lots of great opportunities. We have someone that we can turn to. We have someone that will listen to us. And the biggest thing that I want to try to do out of respect for Jamal 
is to focus on what brings us together and not be decisive. We've had that conversation and, you know, calling people together. So as I move forward in the community, I, I want to definitely put out an energy that is as respectful to you. And so um, I do think about the things that you tell me and I take note to it. I, you know, I look at you like a, a brother, a mentor, you know, now, and um, I know that I can come to you. And I want everybody to know that you're one of the easiest people to come and talk to about anything. So um, like I said, <laughs> you know, everything that is going on, I know it's hard work, but I hope it's well-deserved praise you get, accomplishments. I'm excited. You still got nine months of this. You know what I'm saying? We all got And it's a journey. It's still a journey. And it's going to, like this person I am today, it's probably going to be different growth-wise six months from now, because there's going to be so much that's gone on since then. I do want to invite everybody to Leather Week, the week before Folsom in San Francisco. we got stuff going on. Um, and I have a fundraiser for um, my Title I. Um, and it's a fetish carnival. So you'll see different demonstrations and, and carnival type games and stuff like that during that um, event. So come well, on out. Come well, on out. Click this and share it with everybody. All right, y'all. That brings us to the end of Throwing Light with Jamal, International Mr. Leather 46. You're going to see more of Jamal. I'm definitely going to have him back. <laughs> that brings us to the end. And remember, y'all, I'm LTJ Rees. And if you're not Throwing Light, you're not acting right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> see you later.